Hi friends, I'm Nadine Fonseca, author of Only a Trenza Away. In the story, you get to meet a fun little girl named Ziomara and her papa. Each night as she sits down to have her hair braided after bath to take care of it from getting too knotted or dirty or frustrating to work with the next day, um, Papa has come up with a tradition where they go on imaginative adventures together. So we see them go to the jungle and we see them go to the circus. We see them go underwater and even into space. Um, and they go on these daring adventures together. And while Papa may be the initiator of where they go that particular evening, uh, Ziomata is certainly a co-creator of those spaces and those adventures that they go on together. Now, Ziomata feels empowered each time she goes on these adventures with her papa. She feels brave and courageous and curious um, and ambitious and all of these different things, but only when her papa's there. Uh, so one night when he doesn't come home in time to braid her hair before it's bedtime, she attempts to do it herself, but is unfortunately not able to. It's a, it's a little bit too tricky for her. And so she gets really down on herself. Um, and doubts her ability to face any challenge that may be in front of her in life, especially without her, her papa by her side. What we see is papa coming home and talking to her about the many ways that she is already empowered, how she already has this braid that represents the different types of love that already surround her in her life. So he actually says to her, he says, as he splits the braid into three sections, he said, this section will remind you of the people who love you deeply. This one is for the many people who will need your love. And this one, this will help you remember to love yourself exactly as you are now and as you hope to be. Your hair is stronger woven into a braid with love. Your braids will protect your hair and your heart. So the themes throughout the story are really about love and strength and trust and not just loving others but loving ourselves um and also about not just trusting others but trusting ourselves so the story is actually a love letter in in two respects so one is a little girl who really looks up to her father um who really values his leadership his example his courage um his tenaciousness um and and is grateful for the time that he has spent in what would otherwise be kind of a boring or frustrating activity of braiding and brushing her hair every night into something that's fun and meaningful um, and allows for that, for that time to, to bond and build the, that relationship. On the other side of that love letter is a parent, a caregiver, who wants nothing more than to raise this child to know that they have the capacity within them to do great things, that they can love themselves for where they're at as a child with limited abilities, while simultaneously looking ahead to the person that they hope and want to be and working towards that and love that person too. Um, there's also a little note of a call to advocacy as it talks about there being a section of the braid that is a reminder of the people who will need your love. Um, and to look around outside of ourselves and find those people who could really benefit from our compassion. Um, so as those themes are woven throughout, I, I hope you find different conversation pieces to have with children about who in their life they can identify that loves them. And every household and every family looks different. And so at the very least, as a, as a storyteller, as a mentor, as an educator, a teacher, um, or caregiver, we have the opportunity to identify ourselves as someone that loves that child if they can't think of anyone at that moment to remind them that they can also love themselves and that's a value. So I am Latina. My family is um, actually, I'm biracial. So my mom is here from the States and my dad is from Guatemala. Um, my husband's family is from Mexico. So we have a blending of some of those Hispanic cultures as well. Um, and in here, you'll see not only the tradition of braiding as it uh, is rooted in Hispanic culture, um, although it comes from many other cultures, and I've included an author's note to give credit to those other amazing cultures that have utilized braiding um, throughout thousands of years of history. 
Uh, but you'll also see Latino culture in Spanish throughout, right? As we see trenzas, mija is a term of endearment, meaning mi hija, my daughter. But also it is to have the opportunity to have another hanging point in which kids can weave the tapestry of the narrative of Latinx culture and their perspective on it through stories. But there's certainly the danger of, of um, telling stories with the expectation that a people or a culture um, or a place is, is some type of monolith. Um, and so the goal here isn't to shed light on all of the Latinx experience, but more so to have one more touch point for children to be able to paint that grand mural that is ever progressing on their perspective of what this culture and what Latinx people experience as families and households um, for, for them to see come off the pages. So as a child, there was still a lot of emphasis from my father um, on assimilation as a protective mechanism to not cause any trouble for ourselves. Um, and so imagination as a child allowed me to escape that expectation to blend in. It allowed me to have the creativity that I wanted to burst out, um, but still be able to utilize it in a way that allowed me to have control over my own narrative. Um, since so many others were trying to tell the immigrant story of Central Americans um, that allowed me to take ownership of my own story. Um, and it also allowed me to escape a reality that was oppressive. Um, and I got to be able to be as wild and crazy and all of those things that, that I could possibly be because my imagination facilitated that for me. For children, the opportunity to see that here is, you know, braiding's not fun. What else is not fun in your life? And how can your imagination help you cope with that in a healthy way? How can it help you escape for a moment, give you a breath of fresh air or salty air if you're by the ocean in your imagination? How can that help you cope with a, a moment in time until you can get the support and the help that you need to deal with that on a grander scale? And so the, the hope is that children see this and, and also are feeling empowered to use their imagination in that way um, as, a, as a healthy coping mechanism um, in those tougher moments. My research is an anti-bias, anti-racist education. Um, and so we'll see some themes throughout about um, belonging, right? Uh, so you'll see in each situation that Ziamato is in, in her in her imaginative adventures, that her braid is actually connecting her to something. So when she's underwater, it's her rope that connects her to her submarine. Um, when she's in outer space, it connects her to her spaceship. Um, and so these connection points speak to that idea of belonging, the idea of the importance of connection. Um, I've also used really intentional language. So I, I know that for children, it's difficult to put words to feelings at times. And so I tried to give them as many tangible examples that I could. So for example, when Ziomata is feeling a little defeated and deflated, that she couldn't braid her own hair and and therefore how could she possibly face any challenge again in the future, right? Um, I talk about her feeling crumpled um, because what kid has not crumpled a piece of paper before, right? And, and how does that equate to our feelings, our emotions of feeling a little crushed, a little uh, disoriented, a little um, broken or mangled? Um, so I talk about her feeling you know, um, um, crumpled and tangled um, so that they can start identifying those twisty feelings in a way that maybe they can't do with words and, and allowing kids to connect with emotions however is most tangible to them. Um, and same with the braid. While everyone won't braid their hair, um, it is something that I wanted to illustrate that this weaving of love can be connected and can be with us wherever we go. Just like in Ziomata's case, her braid is literally a part of her body. I wanted children to see that very visual representation of how love is woven into us. So some of the things that I've used, you know, other, other than the language, some of the things that I've used in the book is, is a certain cadence to words. So, you know, when she's feeling, um, some some darker feelings, some frustrated feelings. Um, I think of my kids. So I have four children. And I think of my, you know, six or eight year old who, when they're trying to articulate their frustrations, it come out, it comes out in chunks, right? It comes out in 
bursts. Um, and so I, I, as they gasp for breath, as they grasp for words. And so I tried to incorporate that into the writing a little bit where, you know, she's feeling, you know, frustrated and sad and I can't figure out how to get out her words. And so some of that cadence is throughout so that as you read the story out loud, I hope you can take those beats and take those moments so that kids can feel the connection to, oh, she's trying to find her feelings. Oh, she's trying to figure out how to articulate this to an adult because kids can certainly empathize with the time and energy and particular ness <laughs> that it takes to communicate feelings to adults um because oftentimes they're just trying to assuage these situations as quickly as possible and their emotions aren't on a time clock they can't necessarily get them out quickly and so i've tried to create the, that those beats in the cadence of of writing so that kids can identify hey she's like me she's a kid she can't perfectly say all the things she wants to say um that show how she feels the last thing that I want to mention that I want to talk about is um, the color palette throughout the book. It's also another nod to uh, Latinx culture, the bright, vibrant colors. Um, as you can see right over here, we have some <clears throat> Guatemalan, uh, it's a depiction of worry dolls and the embroidery is just these bright threads on bright fabrics. The color palette is this bright, you know, vibrant, palatable, you know, uh, jewel tones um, that are eye-catching for kids, but it's also just another nod to, to that Latinx culture. Two of my favorite spreads that I would love to share with you um, that are in the book um, are one, when Xiomara is feeling down um, after she's been defeated by the braid, she couldn't brush her hair and, and braid her own hair and, and Papa missed that evening. I had very little to say to our amazing illustrator, Camila. She took this and turned it into this beautiful depiction that's just so simple of clouds rolling in and this willow tree with its branches sweeping across in this breeze. And it's one of the things that I absolutely imagined, but never once relayed to our illustrator. And so for her to have felt that story, for her to have had it resonate in the same way as it had resonated with me when I wrote it was very validating, um, but also just gave me the hope that it resonates with others and that this wind being blown, right? That sometimes it feels um, like our feelings, while we can't see them, um, are, are kind of taking us for a ride. Um, so that's one of my favorite spreads. And then my second one, although all the illustrations are amazing, um, my second favorite illustration is when Papa's is starting to have this heart to heart with his with his daughter and they're walking on the face of the earth. And the reason it's one of my favorites is because it allows for a couple of perspectives. So you see all these tiny little trees and a boat and igloos and a shark. They look so minuscule and so tiny since they're walking on the face of the earth. Um, and for adults, sometimes the problems that kids have seem so trivial, so small, so tiny, so minuscule. Whereas for children, they seem vast, like the vastness of the sky and the planets and this big earth that they're walking on. Um, and so I love the play on, on those perspectives for, for each Zia and Papa and, and for us as, as readers. The, the other part that I love is the rainbows that are included that are a symbol of, of hope and love. A little nod to queer kids around the world who may encounter this story that um, it might be a little symbol of, of hope and love to them um, to know that they are valued and loved and perfect just the way that they are. Um, so I hope that you love Only a Trenza Away, and I hope you take the opportunity to read it to children, um, any children, all children, let them read it to you. Um, and then also, I really hope that you take a moment to pause and reflect on what this means for you, how it's a reflection of your childhood, what coping mechanisms you may have used that were helpful and healthy at times of challenge and struggle. What helped you feel confident? How can you model that for the children in your life? What it really means to uh, love beyond ourselves and love ourselves beyond who we are at this very moment. I hope you enjoy Only a Trenza Away.